It's okay to do things for yourself when you're a single man or woman. It's okay. His body, his brain, his present, his future, his life. It's his. I really appreciate your genuine comment and you completely understood what I was getting at with the previous video. Last week I made a video titled, I was a high earning doctor, now I'm an unemployed traveling hippie. How did I get here? And for my small teeny tiny channel, it was getting a lot more views than my videos usually get. And I noticed other videos of a very similar topic were also getting a lot of views. And it kind of made me question, why is that happening? What is it about this topic which is so popular? And I had so many messages and so many comments. So thank you those of you who shared your stories or just said that you found the videos inspiring or just sent me a nice comment, I really appreciate it. Mostly the comments were very, very positive with a few negative ones sprinkled in there. But I guess that comes with the territory. And I think the answer to why these kind of videos are so popular, these doctor to unemployed videos, I think the answer lies within all these comments and messages. So you'll be pleased to know I'm still unemployed and enjoying my life. We're currently in Mexico, we left Colombia and we're road tripping around Mexico City. We've been visiting a load of waterfalls, enjoying the nature. So far, the Mexican people have been so friendly and so welcoming and generous and kind. And it's been a really nice country to visit. And we woke up this morning and this river behind me is right outside where we're staying. And we had a little swim and I'm feeling very refreshed and invigorated, ready to do this video. So firstly, I'd like to address something that was kind of annoying me in the comments. Like I said, mostly very positive comments, but there were quite a lot of comments saying that I copied this other doctor called, or his YouTube channel is called Doobie and Gooby. And if you haven't seen the video, he was an MIT educated neurosurgeon who worked for many years as a neurosurgeon, worked right to the top of his field, and he was feeling disenfranchised with his career and decided to leave. And to be honest, I found Doobie and Gooby's story very inspiring, and it inspired me to make my own video. I struggled to see how sharing my personal story of me working in the NHS for a couple of years as a doctor, then having a mini retirement, coming back to work, but going to work in Australia as a doctor. I struggled to see how my personal story can be a copy of another person's story. I can see how there are similarities in our story. We're both doctors. We both wanted something different from our lives. And there are certain themes and takeaways which are similar. And to be honest, I have so much respect for Doobie and Gooby because I feel like his video will probably open the floodgates for more and more videos like this to come out. And the main difference between his and I... There's an ant on my lens. Let's get rid of that. And the main difference between his and my story is basically he was a lot higher up the ladder than I was. There are levels to being a doctor and being a specialized neurosurgeon is definitely very different to what I am, which is an unspecialized junior doctor. He's basically gone up a lot higher on the ladder and the higher you go, the harder it is to get off. So I commend him highly for doing what he did. Finding happiness and fulfillment, even though it meant giving up, seemingly giving up a lot. Okay, so with that negativity out of the way, let's jump into your messages, your comments, and work out why these doctor to unemployed videos are so darn popular. So the first story I want to share I did ask his permission, is a, this is one of the first messages I got after releasing the video from a good mate of mine back from back home. I'll just share with you what he said. He said, fair play for being so vulnerable in this man. Proud of you, which I really appreciated. He's always been super supportive of my videos. So thank you, man. And then he said, yeah, man, this is probably the topic that brings me the most day-to-day -day angst. Walking this tightrope between future gains and burning time now, doing things that I don't hate but also don't love. And I completely understand where he's coming from. It's so common for us nowadays to want that security, that financial security of having a stable career, a stable job, so that we can afford a house, we can afford a car. In doing so to get that, that money and to get to that certain level in your career, there is some sacrifice to be made. And in his case, in our case, it's the sacrifice is burning the time in your youth, burning in some ways your golden years where you're healthiest, you're fittest, you've got the most energy, the most motivation to do what you want to in life. 
And it is difficult to do both. So I completely understand that push and pull, that walking on the tightrope between trying to decide between the two. And to be honest, there's not a one size fits all for everyone. What is right for one person is not gonna be right for another person. Some people value that security. They value having that stable career, that position in whatever field that they're in. Feeling safe, that's important to them and that's completely fine. But for other people, they feel like they want something else. They want something different. And it really is up for you to decide that. Going back to the 50% rule, the rule where I, that I kind of made up for myself, which was aim to be happy 50% of the time. Completely impossible to be happy 100% of the time. We still need to make room for the, all the other emotions in life, the pain, the sadness. But I think 50% is a good thing to aim for. So if you're not happy 50% of the time, you need to do some serious thinking and reflecting. And then in that same sentence, he also said this, doing things that I don't hate, but also don't love, which really reminded me of this concept called the zone of comfortable complacency. And what essentially the zone of comfortable complacency is, is where your life is shit, but it's not that shit for you to do anything about it. So in some ways, I'm quite grateful that I got to work in the NHS where I had such a terrible time that it prompted me, it pushed me to do something, to change something about my life. If I hadn't gone through that misery, if it wasn't as bad as it was, maybe I would have just put up with it and continued doing something that I didn't really enjoy for the rest of my life. If it was only a little bit shit, if it was only a little bit bad, then maybe I would have just kept doing it. Beware the zone of comfortable complacency. And then he brought up something else which I think is very important. I think the hardest thing is the realization of getting older and needing to think seriously about when to start a family. If that wasn't a timeline, I think I would be much more relaxed actually. It creates a form of pressure that I don't know is helpful or not. And that kind of leads me on nicely onto this next comment, which is somewhat negative. Do you have a wife? Do you have kids? You don't have a permanent home, do you? So you're doing this all for yourself. It's all about you. Seems like most in the younger generations are living only for themselves. And to answer your question, no, I don't have kids. I do have a fiance who I intend to marry and make my wife. But that's entirely the point of this mini retirement. I appreciate what you're saying that I have no dependence, no one that is relying on me for, for money and I have that freedom. And I appreciate my privilege to have that. And I do intend to have kids, but that's why I think it's so important to do these things now when I don't have those responsibilities or dependence. I completely intend to travel with kids as well, but at this stage in our life, one of the reasons we chose to come to Latin and Central America is because they're seen as more dangerous parts of the world where I would feel uncomfortable bringing young children. This is why we're doing it now. This is why we're having this mini retirement before we have children when we get back home. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And then he unfortunately goes on to, to talk a bit more. He goes on to say this, nothing to sacrifice for, nothing to fight for except your freedom, your happiness. My forefathers never smiled. They had nothing to smile about. They busted their ass and put their families for first and for what? To survive. I completely understand what he's saying. The generations above us had more difficult lives. His parents had hard lives and then his gra grandparents had even harder lives than them. But surely it's the wish of every generation for their children to have better lives than they did. Isn't that the whole point? When I have kids, of course I want my kids to have less misery and less suffering than I've had to go through. My parents want less misery and suffering for me. Shouldn't that be the goal of every generation for the next generation to have a better life? You don't want to earn it. You want your retirement now. Well, take it and see where it gets you in your 50s, 60s and 70s with no home and no roots and no family. Good luck. And I think this just highlights the kind of backwards, old fashioned thinking that you need to earn your retirement. You need to work your whole life and then retire at the end when that end may never come. Thankfully, this, there's this lovely comment from the Queen's Wish um, who was replying to this gentleman and I appreciate her coming to come and defend me. My sister-in-law died at 49 after a three year fight with colon cancer. I'm so sorry to hear that. Young people are getting struck down more and more with cancer. The house, family and all the rest may never occur in your 50s, 60s and 70s. Who better to know how short life can be than a doctor? It's okay to do things for yourself when you're a single man or woman. It's okay. His body, his brain, his present, his future, his life, it's his. Thank you so much, the Queen's Wish. I really appreciate your genuine 
comment and you completely understood what I was getting at with the previous video. And yes, I have met multiple patients who have worked their whole life and died shortly after they retired. And not just once, it's happened multiple times throughout my life. So I really appreciate that comment. Thank you so much. And I'm so sorry to hear that your sister-in-law died at age 49. I really hope she got to do everything that she wanted to do in her life before she passed. And on the theme of not saving it for later, I want to bring up a lovely post from a friend, a really good friend back home in Australia, who made a Facebook post to share my video. I'm so grateful to you, mate. Thank you for doing that. And he basically said he wished he saw this video 10 years ago. Now I messaged my friend and asked him if I could share his, show his message. And he said he would be more than happy and he would actually be happy for me to use him as an example. So I'd like to share his story too. And I don't want to paraphrase him, so I'll just read what he wrote to me. He was a correctional officer for, I think about 16 years, maybe longer. He wasn't happy with what he was doing. And this is what he said to me. Trapped by a high income job, and I was very good at my job. I was getting promoted all the time and was being groomed for senior management. My mental health was not good, but I didn't realize because I was self-medicating with alcohol. Eventually quit my job and took up as a student pilot. It was a childhood dream to fly. Never thought I was smart enough to do it. Again, like you, my partner encouraged me to pursue my dream, so I did. Now a full-time flight instructor, DJing came from a love of the Duff scene. For those of you who don't know, the Duff scene is like an Australian outback festival scene. Music, meditation, yoga, dancing, all the fun stuff. Again, my partner bought me a controller for my birthday and I self-taught, playing at the Duffs now and even a few other gigs. What I take away from stories like yours and mine is don't let yourself get trapped by dollars or what you think other people's expectations of you are. I had maybe two negative comments about why you are leaving. You earn so much, you're so good. Where will you go, etc. But mostly people are stoked for me. Side note, I now currently earn less than a quarter of my old income, yet our lifestyle is the same, if not better. And yes, I'm very, very stoked for you, mate. I'm so happy you're doing what's meaningful and fulfilling to you and keep doing what you're doing, it's inspiring. And I can't believe all these stories. I'm gonna quickly go through some of the comments that were shared. I'm an optometrist and took a sabbatical from 2020 to 2023. It was the happiest time of my life in recent times. Traveled around Mexico, that's where I'm at, at the moment, and the Caribbean. Then got bored too and decided to work again, but with a different mindset. I've come to the conclusion that for me, retirement is overrated. Just find a purpose and something you are passionate about. Ikagi, like the Japanese call it. We all need the breaks to reset and repurpose. I couldn't agree more. Thank you for your comment. Then Dr. Diane Thompson. Thanks for sharing. I've been as far as I wanted to go in academic medicine, department chief. No one understood why I would resign and step aside from the prestige and money, but I had been having internal dialogue and need I knew I needed a mini retirement. I took nine months off and re returned to a similar position at another hospital. I am now seven months in my second mini retirement. The time away has given me more clarity. At this point, I recognize how much I enjoy teaching people how to prevent diseases in the first place. I love not having a set work schedule. I wish everyone was in the position to be able to take time away to seek clarity and have the opportunity to reinvent and focus on what they enjoy. I too wish everyone was in the position to be able to take time away. Thank you for sharing, Dr. Thompson. It sounds like you were very high up in your career. So obviously even more difficult to step away from it. And I think she's acknowledging the fact that not everyone can do this. Not everyone has the, the financial ability or the ability to take a risk to do something different with their lives, either because they've got dependents, they're a single mother of two children, or they live in a less developed country where they simply cannot afford to. So I really appreciate what she's saying there too. I'm a doctor in South Korea. I'm also having a mini retirement after working as a GP for four years. I sometimes feel vulnerable because I have nowhere to go every day and I have to spend my savings. But at the same time, I have an internal dialogue with myself about what I really like and what I love. Being a doctor is everyone's dream in South Korea. So I think unconsciously I made the decision to conform to that atmosphere. I thought being a doctor was a magic prescription for happiness ever after, but it wasn't at all. I'm glad to have this time to reflect on myself. It was amazing to hear from other doctors who have lived a life like mine. Thanks for making this video. Absolutely no problem. Thank you for sharing your story as well.
I was a highly successful lawyer making tons of money, but I wasn't happy and constantly stressed. Early retired in Vietnam, a lot more poor, but a lot more happy. I'm 53 and I've taken three mini retirements in my life so far. I'm ready for the next one, to be honest. I'm so glad it's now a thing. Makes me look a bit less crazy. Lindsay B40, you're not crazy. And I think the more people share stories like this, the less and less crazy it will seem to take some time off work or take a risk to pursue something that you really want to do. And I hope one day, just like the retirement is baked into our society's culture, I hope the mini retirement becomes baked into the culture as well. And it just becomes another accepted thing that people do. Now, some people take a mini retirement to pursue another career, pursue other passions. It seems to be like a common theme that traveling is a huge thing. And I want to quickly explain why traveling is so important to me and why I've been doing it on my mini retirement. And I'd like to share this quote with you just because I recently finished reading the book, The Autobiography of Malcolm X, which is fan a fantastic read, by the way. Why am I as I am? To understand that of any person, his whole life from birth must be reviewed. All of our experiences fuse into our personality. Everything that ever happened to us is an ingredient. Every experience you have is an ingredient for your personality. And I couldn't help thinking about this as I was wandering around the James Edwards Gardens near Hilitla, Mexico. For those of you who don't know who James Edwards was or what these gardens were, James Edwards was a poet, a very rich man. He moved to Mexico and he built this kind of wonderland, this sanctuary with all these very weird sculptures, structures, quite a surrealist atmosphere. It was all very clearly influenced by his life. And you can see every experience that he's had has been taken and put into this garden, into this sanctuary. Every place that he's traveled to, every person that he met, all the artists that he hung around with, all the writers. He was good friends with a lot of the surrealist artists at the time. People like Salvador Dali, Rene Magritte. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. If not, I probably sound super uncultured, but you may not have heard those names, but you have definitely, you will definitely recognize their paintings. And also famous writers like Aldous Huxley. And it's clear that this place was just a manifestation of all the experiences that he had in his life. And that's why I like to travel. It's like a big mixing pot of experience that infused into the people we become. And in some ways we can choose our experience. Therefore, choose the people we become. But it doesn't have to be travel or not working. When people take these mini retirements or time away from work, it's more about pursuing something that's meaningful to you. And I can now see why these videos, these doctor to unemployed videos are so popular. And that's because the stories resonate with so many people. So many people, regardless of their culture, their religion, their race, their gender, resonate with these stories because they feel trapped in a life they hate and they don't see a way out. And these stories give people hope, hope that there is a better life. They don't have to keep doing what they're doing for the rest of their life until they die. I've had friends message me, I've had nurse friends, doctor friends, and friends from all walks of life messaging me, telling me about their similar problem or similar feelings about their life situation. I hope hearing my story, Doobie's story, Dr. Diane Thompson's story, just gets you to at least think and reflect on your own life. And remember the 50% rule. If you're not happy 50% of the time, you need to do some serious thinking and reflecting. Please leave me a comment to share your story. I'm sure there's many, many more people that I would love to hear from. I hope you receive the message of my story and I hope you take action to design a life that is meaningful to you, whatever that is.